Hey, it's me again, back with another Starburst update. I know it's been a super long time, but it's been worth it. I've gotten so much done. In the last one, I had one leg done and I was super proud of that. That's a lot of progress. It's some of the most progress I've ever made. But right after that video, I just started going and going and going. And soon enough, I got to where I am now. I have all of the torso printed, chest, abs, cod piece, and the leg, and I am super excited about it. So it's probably in the thumbnail, but I'll just roll a picture of that right now. And this one I had it duct taped on the floor. So yeah, I'm just gonna go over every piece I did and how I got them all cut up to fit on my printers because my printers aren't good. I love them but they're not the biggest. So I'll just be going over the process of every piece, my thought process, if there's any special things that happen while printing it, and then I'll just roll some clips of the pieces in Prusa Slicer. First one I'll talk about is the cod piece. So in the last video, I had one butt cheek done. Now I've got one singular piece of this done. <laughs> I'm introducing you to the left butt cheek. And I now have all of this. So I'll show you where I had to slice this up in Prusa Slicer to get them to fit on my printers. So this piece and this piece are split right here. And these two butt cheeks are split right down the middle. And then this front part is just split right down the middle too. Also something I'm super excited about with this, I did magnets. So I have a little pad right here with three magnets on each. This one's a little messed up, but just ignore that. And then I have three magnets embedded in each side of this. And yeah, I'm, I know it's not the biggest deal, but like, I'm very proud of that for myself because I've never done anything like that before, so. It really makes me happy. And these pads are just made of really thin support material that I melted together with a soldering iron and just attached onto the sides here. But just to give you an idea of some of the material I may use for that, this would be something I would use because it's very thin right here and I'd use the soldering iron to kind of melt that down together. And thin pieces like this that um, have been torn from other larger support pieces are also really helpful for filling in gaps and stuff like that. Yeah, this came out really well, I think, fits really well. But one bad thing is that having these magnets on the sides of the hips right here makes it a little tight because it was pretty much a perfect fit at first. So adding these magnets makes it really tight. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way around that, maybe smoothing these pieces down as much as I can, putting a little bit of foam or thin felt on it. I'll figure something out, it's not too bad. It is a little bit of an inconvenience, if anyone has suggestions, let me know. All right, so we have the chest here. It's all split up into pieces and I don't really feel like taping it all together right now again, but uh, just trust me that it fits all together. Well, okay, it has a little bit of trouble fitting together. It's just because of the file, I think, or it could be because they warped or just printed slightly off and it added up. But this, these two sides do have a little trouble. If I line up the bottom, this part is a little out of alignment with the top, like you can see there. The other side's not like that, so I'm just gonna have to figure something out, melt, warp, whatever. It'll be fun. But yeah, the chest uh, had probably the most pieces total, with the copies being the second and having the most pieces. I'll go ahead and run through the pieces sliced up and process like. So yeah, here you can see how I welded all these together, welded the arm piece to the side, and also you can see where I had to chop off just a tiny little bit of the end of this to barely get it to fit. And I welded it back on, which I'm actually going to reverse doing. I'll talk about that in a minute. Same thing with this side, and the chest is pretty self-explanatory. So yeah, I'm gonna be cutting these sides 
off the chest again. Before, the plan was to keep these pieces just how they were. I was not going to fuse this one to this one at all. I was going to connect it with, um, I was thinking either like buckles or magnets, but both the buckles and magnets seem to have faults to them. Like if I used buckles, then I would only be able to use them in places I would be able to like stretch my arm up and under the chest to unbuckle, which would be like the very bottom because I've, I tried a lot of times. It's kind of impossible to reach through the top and unbuckle a top one because there's a little accent piece on the chest that sits right there. So it's kind of impossible for me to like reach up and under there. And then I thought about magnets, which the ones I thought would be best were those same purse class magnets that I used on the cod piece. But then I realized that the way I had them positioned on the cod piece was in a way where they couldn't be pulled apart. Because in these magnets, one side has an in-cropping and the other one has an out-cropping. That's how you say that. So when you put them together, they cannot be pulled apart sideways. So basically I have these connected right now and if I pull this way like it's not coming apart. But if I pull but if I pull in opposite directions then you can hear one just came apart. So their strongest direction is pulling this way. The slightly weaker direction is pulling them apart this way. And the very weakest direction is pulling them apart diagonally. Like if you twist one diagonally, like it's over. So basically how I get these magnets to undo most of the time is getting my fingers up under this raft right here and just pulling. And that's because I'm pulling diagonally on them and it just lets go. And it's the easiest way to get them off. Which makes me think that if I had the chest on fully and it was connected right here, the way these pieces are going to want to be pulling is if I let go to this piece I'm holding right now, if I just let go of it and just continue being normal, it wants to do that. It wants to go diagonal from this inward. So that would be the worst direction to have those magnets in, right? Because they would just be coming off. So after that long-winded explanation, I couldn't do either of those. So what's left? How am I gonna get the chest on? Because the opening would be too small for me to get into otherwise, if I didn't split these pieces up. So I thought, why am I making this so complicated? It doesn't need to be that complicated. If I just slice off directly this little inward facing part that's making me so difficult for me to get it on, if I just like cut this off, then my problem solved. I can just fuse all these pieces together. I, I don't have to take anything apart. Literally every problem is solved. So what I'm gonna do, like I said, slice this off. I'm gonna connect some elastic and magnets right here. The elastic to just keep it on. And then the magnets will actually connect this to stay in this position. So what I'll do is I'll just bend this back and so it'll disconnect put this on and then reach back behind and just split this back and it will reconnect with the magnet. It might not make the most sense right now, but I promise I have a plan. Okay, so the last part for today is the abs and my gosh, was this the worst print. Basically, my humble opinion on these abs is that they are the worst ever for one. Two, you just have to print them. Take it from me, I have tried hours to position these in a way that I can use less supports. It's it's not a thing. You, you really just have to do it. And um, for me, I'm someone who hates using too many supports. I hate wasting filament. I hate using too many supports. I hate it, it's annoying, and getting all them out is just a nightmare. And I'm also not afraid of cutting a lot of things up and putting them back together. So basically it used slightly less supports if I just cut this down the middle. So I just did it and started printing them. But little did I know, my printer would have an issue I have never encountered before, ever. Basically the spool in the middle of the night got tied around the spool holder. But it was in a literal knot. I don't know how it happened, but it got tied in a knot around the spool holder. 
But anyway, obviously that stopped working. So me not wanting to waste filament, I just went into the slicer and tried to line it up exactly right, cut it again, and got the parts I left off. And then I printed the rest of it. So it's in four pieces right now, which was meant to be two. You can see I cut it right down the middle there and here are the pieces that I had to add. And my gosh, our support's the most awful thing to get out of this print. You can see there's some like stuck up in there. I have no idea how I'm gonna get them out. It's just the worst step. These are gonna be so difficult. So that's just gonna have to be a thing. And honestly, I may be printing this thing again, which I really don't want to. That would be the worst thing in the world. I really don't want to reprint this, but I might just have to because of an idea I'm doing, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. The idea also applies to these, but I will not have to reprint these, which is great. So these are just the side pieces to the abs, which just connect like this and go around. And yes, the bad look of the abs did extend to these because this happened. And this was not an error with my printer. It was not an error with the filament. It was not a jam, it wasn't a clog. It was just the G-code. And I have no idea how it happened. Um, Cause if you look from right here, this point, like you would think if it was in the G-code, then this error would correspond to like everything with that height, but it didn't but I printed this twice. I printed it once and stopped it about here because it had this issue right there and I thought it was an issue like with the filament or something or the printer. So I started it again and it did the exact same thing in the same spot so I just let it print. So yeah I just thought that was mysterious. Um, it's gonna be an easy fix because like it's very it's very movable, very wobbly. And also if you look, it's kind of a clean cut. So I'm gonna be able to fix that with the soldering iron real easy. I'm just gonna have to smooth it all out. Anyways, other than that, no problems with these. They're great. And I really like the pattern on these. I don't know why, I just think it's a really cool piece. So anyways, I think, I think that's about it. That was about it for all the new pieces. If you're still watching, it must mean that you're really interested in making things like this or possibly even making the same suit. And if so, then I hope that some of that advice helped you out. And if you're not interested in making your own suit and you're just watching it because you're one of those people like me that really enjoy watching series of people very tediously building things, yes, I think other people do that too then also thank you and I hope you're entertained. Some things to expect if you want to keep following this series. I want to make this suit different from others because I know Star Boost is a suit that a lot of people do and that's that's great because like it's a great suit, great colors, like it's different than other Iron Man suits, right? And of course the free file, free file, free Walsh City helmet, like it's the deal. If you're new to 3D printing, your first suit, like this is a no brainer, honestly. So a lot of people are making it. So I kind of wanted to make mine different from others in some ways. So I have two ideas in separate categories that are going to be kind of a different take on this. One, I'm going to try to make this suit have a lot of mobility. And I know this suit already generally has more mobility than kind of a lot of other suits, but I really just want to be able to do whatever in it. I don't want to feel like I'm restricted from doing too much. I want to be able to raise my legs, bend over, and most of all, I want to sit. I would love to be able to make this suit sittable. <laughs> And I do already have some ideas for that, but I'm really just gonna have to keep thinking about it, engineering it in my head a little bit. But I do have some starting ideas, and I, yeah, I just, I really wanna make this suit mobile. And also, I love the idea of making a suit mobile without losing the armor coverage, if that makes sense. I'm gonna leave it at that. 
And the second category is color. And I'm gonna leave it at that. If you are interested in future updates, this is just a warning. It may take another two months. I have a lot going on right now in school, job, friends, family. There's a lot of things to balance out right now. And balancing all that out also with making this suit has been extremely hard, <laughs> we'll say that. But um, I am really fired up about this and I've always wanted to make a suit, so I've been making the time. But it's just, it's just hard to do, you know? And there's some periods where I just don't do it at all, really, like a few weeks, and there's a few weeks where I like really do it, and that's where all this stuff came from. So the next update will come when I have another one of those weeks, and I get, and I get an amount significant enough for me to feel like it'd make a good update video. And when I have the time to film that update video and edit it and all that stuff. Anyways, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. You should probably, if you're at this point, I don't see why you wouldn't subscribe to me for my future updates in two months. And maybe watch some more videos and get caught up if you didn't watch the rest of them. Alright, I'm gonna do the hand thing.